think everybody here is probably pretty adept at Zoom at this point in our global pandemic experience, but just a few gentle reminders. Um, if you're not speaking, I'd ask that you keep yourself on mute. You all are already doing that, so yay, thank you. Um, if you do have that moment, there's always that moment in a meeting where somebody is trying to speak and they are muted, so we'll give you those reminders. But um, if you do have something that you'd like to say or a question, panelists, you can digitally raise your hand. Most folks should know how to do this, but it is if you open up the panelist window, or excuse me, the participants window at the bottom of your screen, and then there's those three little dots, you click on that and that'll help you raise your hand. You can also use the chat. I personally love using the chat and I'll be monitoring that just if you have like a, hey, that was a really cool graphic or hello, so-and-so's dog that just wandered into the frame. Or if you wanna let me know that you have a question or a comment, you can just type in question or comment and then I'll know what order to go in. So let's use the chat. Let's raise our hands. It's also so wonderful to see your faces. So many times these Zoom meetings are the majority of my social interaction for the day. So it's always really nice for me to see you. And it's really helpful for me as facilitator to know if somebody's like trying to wave me down and get your my attention or they're trying to speak and they're on mute, unfortunately. So when we go into discussion, I'd ask that you keep your videos on, but we will be having a brief presentation today um, and Jennifer will be sharing her screen and we'll get to introductions in a second. So hold tight on that. You'll know who Jennifer and everyone else is. Um, but you're welcome to turn your videos off while we are presenting. Sometimes you might want to get a snack or you might want to stand up and stretch. Do whatever you got to do to keep yourself healthy and engaged for the next two hours of our meeting time. Um, does anybody, before we kind of get into some introductions and talking about our meeting, have any initial questions, concerns, technical things? You've somehow managed to not use Zoom for the past nine months and you have no idea how this is working. Okay, I got a couple of smiles, so I know that folks are um, are here. Um, Jenny, I'm going to ask, since I'm going to start rolling into things, if you can maybe forward that email to Ivan. We're getting a couple more folks who I think we're just getting links and everything ready. There's Tony. We're going to add him into the meeting. There are a couple of folks observing this evening for um, a couple of interested neighbors and members of the public. We're glad that you're here. Don't worry if we can't see you, we can't hear you. So you're welcome to just continue on with whatever you're doing for your evening and tune in uh, for our meeting. So the intention of our meeting tonight is really to welcome the project advisory committee members, all of you, and to thank you for what you've agreed to do for the next few months and to join us um, in this next phase of bringing to life the Aquatic Center and Recreation Center in Lake Oswego. And before we go any further, um, we are gonna get a, a bit of a presentation this evening on the agendas that were sent out to you by Jenny um, earlier. You got a charter document and an agenda. There's been a slight change in our agenda, just to give you a heads up. As we talked it through, we really wanted to be sure that we had enough time for you all to understand kind of where we are in this process and uh, to ask questions of the project team if necessary. So we switched the charter review and the um, project overview presentation. So those are just happening at two different times in the meeting. But again, I'll guide you through all of this. But before that, I'd love to just hear a little bit from each of you and to know a little bit more about who you are, why you're excited about this. So let's do a round robin of introductions. And I'd love to hear from everyone. And what I'll do is I'll just call your first name and we'll hear from the project team members, we'll hear from the PAC members. And if you can tell us your name, and if you're representing um, you know, a group or an organization or here kind of on behalf of an interest that you have, um, you can tell us that. And then what you're excited about when it comes to this endeavor and this project. Um, John Wenlin, Councillor John, told us that he's been involved in this project in some way, shape or form for a very long time. So I'm sure a lot of you bring deep interest, passion um, to this project and to recreation and aquatics. So I'd love to hear just a little bit about what excites you in all of this. And just because as a fellow person from Hawaii, Aokai, I'm going to go with you first. I'm wondering if you can introduce yourself and kick us off. Hello, my name is Aokai Ferguson, and I've lived here in Lake Oswego for the last six years. I was here previously with my wife when she did her residency back in 1999 to 2002. 
Um, so I am very familiar with the pool as it exists today. I'm the water polo coach. Um, to go further, uh, I was just named the Lake Ridge High School Boys and Girls Water Polo Coach. I'm also the Lake Oswego Water Polo Organization Head Coach and uh, of the youth program and their program director. Um, but going back to the pool, I was the first um, Lake Oswego High School coach back in 99. It was a combination of the two high schools. Um, so I'm very excited about um, the new pool. I'm actually an avid basketball player too and looking at the diagrams for all the different activities, um, even a little bit, maybe too much information. I just live right down the road from the golf course um, on Sunny Hill Drive. So I couldn't be more uh, happy to see this finally get um, taken care of because in 99, we were in fact discussing um, the possibility of a new pool. So I'm, I'm excited to be part of, of this group and, and facilitating that dream. Cool. Thank you so much, Okai. And we'll try not to call you coach too much in the meeting. <laughs> no problem. Got a counselor and a coach. Um, one quick thing, housekeeping, I completely forgot. This meeting is being recorded, just so you all know. That shouldn't hopefully come as any alarm to you, but just an FYI, we're recording it. And also my colleague, Ariella Frischberg, will be taking notes this evening just to capture any questions that we don't get to and to provide a summary of the meeting. That was the last two things I forgot, hopefully. So let's continue with John Wenland. Hello. Good evening, John. Hello, I'm John Wenland. I uh, actually, uh, I'm on the city council now, but I was on the school board along with uh, John Wallen, and <clears throat> we've been... We've known for a long time that the school uh, need, needed to replace the pool. And we knew from the city side, we needed a recreation center and we need a, a great place for our, our outstanding parks and rec staff to be housed. And so uh, it's long overdue. And I think uh, I'm just very excited that we're spending money on, on a uh, what I think the first joint um, project between the district and the city, and uh, I think we are going to be, my main driver on this is to give a great facility uh, for the citizens of Lake Oswego and to give our, our kids a great pool to swim in that they can compete in. Uh, and just maybe this is too much information, but I mean, I was, I took swimming lessons in the pool and I, uh, pools have a useful life time span and, I'm old enough to know that uh, when I was swimming in the pool, it was fairly new. It's not very new anymore. And so uh, we need to replace it. And we, uh, and so I go way back in the roots of Lake Oswego. And, and uh, at one point in time, you, you went there in third, sixth and, and ninth grade to learn how to swim. And uh, it was great program. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll bring that back. So uh, anyway, that's where I'm coming from. Thank you, John. And uh, it's always great to hear about the life of, the, of some of these things, right? And um, just imagine a little you swimming in that pool. It's very, very charming. Uh, let's go continue with Jan. You're next on my screen. Hello, everyone. I am Jan Wirtz and uh, my role with the city is I'm the deputy director for recreation and adult services. Um, like John, I um, have a very long history uh, with the city of Lake Oswego. My husband actually is a graduate of LO High from 1971 and was a swimmer before there was a pool at Lake Oswego High School. So um, very personally interested in and invested in this project. Um, my role will be to program spaces um, with activities of recreational and aquatic um, to help citizens recreate safely and um, healthfully and hopefully very enjoyably. Thanks, Jan. Cole, let's continue with you. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Cole Olson and uh, I am, I'm an engineering manager at Intel, um, but I live here in Lake Oswego. Uh, my family and I have lived here for about 12 years now. Um, the whole time kind of in the Hallinan 
uh, neighborhood. Currently, we live across the street from the golf course. Uh, so like coach, uh, we're neighbors. I'm not going to hold back on calling you coach, by the way. So uh, so we, we love that property. Um, we, we cross the street and we look for golf balls in the cemetery and we, we um, go to the driving range a lot and we're head up to Lake Ridge and use the football field. And so having a pool in the neighborhood would be ex- awesome for our family and our peer group. Um, we, we represent probably, you know, families with young children. Um, we have, we have a, a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, and now we have an eight-week-old puppy. So I'm not sure if that's relevant at all, but that adds to the chaos. These are always relevant. Thank <laughs> you so much, Cole. Appreciate it. Let's continue with Lisa, and then we'll go to Jenny and Bruce. Hello, um, I'm Lisa Lowy, and um, I also took swim lessons in the pool, fond memories of it. So um, was born and raised in Lake Oswego, uh, graduated from Lake Ridge High School, um, have uh, a long history in town. A matter of fact, my parents who are 86 still live in the house they built when they were 18 and 19 years old. Um, and I was away for a while and moved back. Um, and I'm happy to have brought my kids back here. If you drive by Lake Ridge, there's a baseball field there in honor of my brother, Gary Smith, um, who was a baseball player at Lake Ridge. And, um, I'm happy to say that there's five of us on that Lake Ridge hall of fame wall. Um, so avid sports family, um, and have been in the area a long time. Um, I'm also a physician. Um, and a yoga teacher. So um, having athletes, a senior right now at Lake Ridge, and then that connection and a long uh, Lake Oswego connection. um, I'm just really interested in it. I'm interested from a health standpoint um, and a personal standpoint and a student athlete standpoint. So um, yeah, that's why I'm here. Thanks, Lisa. Jenny, over to you. Hey everybody, I'm Jenny Anderson. Um, I'm new to working at the city of Lake Oswego um, as a project manager. I'm going to be helping Bruce with um, the public engagement side of this project. I'm really excited to be working on this project and it's lovely to meet all of you. Thanks, Jenny. Bruce, over to you. Hello everyone, Uh, I'm Bruce Powers. I'm the uh, city's project manager for this project. And uh, very excited to say that it's going to be one of the most fun projects I've ever worked on. I've only been doing this about 30 years, so um, it'll, be, it'll be fun to do this. Um, I think my task will be to keep uh, Ivan and Tony in line um, and keep them focused on the big picture. And uh, working with Sid and, and Erica and, and Jen to, to get the design done. So. I'll have my hands in lots of pots and I'm really excited and looking forward to this challenge. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. And I hope at some point we get some musical treats from you as well. So (laughs) that's my secret hope. I I charge for that. Okay, fair, (laughs) fair, fair, fair. Let's continue with Cassidy, then Lainey and Jazeel. Um, My name is Cassidy. I'm a senior at Lake Oswego High School. Um, I'm a captain for the girls golf team and the swim team this year so kind of got the whole scope of um, of both a lot of aspects of this uh, project Um, and I'm also well I I lifeguarded at the LOSD pool for two years I was also lifeguard at the city of Lake Oswego swim park um, for two summers as well. So um, lots of um, experience on the student athlete um, side of things, but also just kind of seeing um, swim lessons and and lots of swim teams, water polo, um, lap swimmers too. And I'm just really excited for um, kind of a lot of diverse groups to be able to come to bet, to come together and into a pool that's, um, as Mr. Wenlin said, is it's pretty well overdue. Um, to kind of get this new pool going. So really excited to be here. Thanks, Cassidy. All right, Lainey, over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Lainey Decker. It's nice to meet you all. Um, I am also in the neighborhood. I think my interest group is um, personal user and family enthusiast. 
I moved from Portland um, almost three years ago. And I think one of our only complaints about our new area is that we haven't been able to find this kind of facility. So when I heard this was happening, I was very excited. Um, I think it's, it's gonna be great. And um, we have, let's see, a 12 year old and an eight year old. And we live on Cherry Crest Drive. So just around the corner from Coach, I think. So glad to know some neighbors here. Um, so yeah, we're nearby and we're excited. Thanks, Lainey. Hi, Giselle. Hi, my name is Giselle and I am a uh, by professional project manager myself. So I was interested um, when this project came about because it's in a completely different industry that I work in. Um, I'm new to Lake Oswego, uh, fairly new to Lake Oswego, have only lived here for about three or four years. Uh, but there is a lot of the things that I seek to find in the city um, tied to this, to this type of uh, program. So I think that the opportunity to have had experiences in other cities and other parts of the world, uh, and then being able to look at, you know, how does that fit into what we want to build here in Lake Oswego would be fantastic. Thanks, Giselle. Glad to have you here. All right, let's hear from Jennifer, then Ariella, and then over to Chris. Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer Marsicek. I work at Scott Edwards Architecture with Sid, Erica, and Andra. And um, I've been there for just over 15 years and I'm coming off um, working on the project in Newburgh, so the Shehalem Aquatic and Fitness Center. Uh, we had a great experience um, and time working with that community and we're really excited to work on yours and bring some of that experience to uh, to your project. Thanks Jennifer and you'll be hearing a lot more from Jennifer later so be excited. All right Ariella over to you. Hello uh, my name is Ariella. I'm a project coordinator at JLA Public Involvement um, and my role in these meetings is mostly taking notes and helping with technical assistance so if you have any tech issues um, I'm your gal. And you can, uh, if you don't know, you should be able to privately message anybody in the chat as well. Um, if you are passing notes though, just know that we can see those when we download the record of the chat. But uh, if you do want to reach out to Ariella if something's wonky, she's on hand to help you out with any tech stuff. Okay, Chris, over to you. Hi there, I'm uh, Chris Duncan and I am a member of the Parks Board along with Sandy and Sarah, who you haven't met quite yet. Um, I have, you know, I guess I would say that my angle on all of this is that I don't have an angle. Um, I have uh, two kids, 10 and 12. Um, you know, I am a, am a gym rec center user. I like to swim recreationally. You know, my kids take swim lessons. My parents do aqua size in, in other states. Uh, you know, so I kind of, I really appreciate all of the different things that this, uh, this has to offer all the different uh, citizens and groups in Lake Oswego, and I'm just really excited that, you know, that we were actually able to, to get this project going. Um, and I'm also a Midwestern transplant, where they seem to build rec centers before they even bother with, uh, you know, electrical utilities and, and water systems. So, um, like many others, I, I was somewhat shocked when we moved here nine years ago, and I, I thought, where's the rec center? We have to drive all the way to Portland. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think this will be great, and I'm also, I think now the third Sunny Hill subdivision uh, resident here. So uh, good for us. Hi, Lainey. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. All right, John, Natalie, and then Sandy up next. Hey, I'm uh, John Wallen. I'm uh, on the uh, Lake Oswego School Board. Um, I joined the school board six years ago. And one of the first things we did was to do an assessment of all our facilities in the district in preparation for a school bond. And the building that scored one of the worst buildings was the pool building. So I thought, it's a no brainer. We're gonna rebuild the pool. It's gonna be super easy. Well, was six, six years ago, it, it's, been, it's been going on for a while, but I'm so excited that we're working with the city to make it's what's gonna be an awesome structure that's gonna have a pool, that's gonna have all kinds of recreational facilities. It's gonna be such an asset to our community. And I'm just, I'm so excited that this meeting is, is finally happening and we're on the, we're on the road. Thanks, John. Okay, Natalie, over to you. Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm a sophomore at Lake Ridge High School, and I play lacrosse, and I'm also a part of the dance team, and I'm very passionate about dance, 
and I really want younger kids to be able to have a good space where they can learn to dance. Um, I also participated in a ton of activities when I was younger, so I really want younger kids to be able to engage in different activities to find out like what they're passionate about. Thank you, Natalie. We're glad that you're here. Also, I just want to say for um, a senior and a sophomore, like, thank you. Being in school is is no joke. So just thank you so much for being here on a school night from six to eight. We really appreciate it. Sandy, over to you. Sorry, you're muted, Sandy. Yep, yep. it's going to happen to somebody. I know. She has a quarter. She's the first one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not like I haven't been on Zoom all day long, which I have, so sorry about that. Um, hi, my name is Sandy Traversado, and I am representing the Parks Board. And um, gosh, it seems like I have been waiting forever for this meeting, like John and some of my fellow um, cohorts here in this group. I'm from Portland, but in I, raised, I had my kids and spent a lot of time in San Diego. And in 2003, I moved back here. And I wasn't like a 20 something anymore. I had these kids and I'm like, oh, where do I take them to recreate? And I went to the Southwest Community Center. I thought, this is so awesome. Why is it that Lake Oswego doesn't have that? So um, I showed up a couple years later at a meeting about the West End building and this community center we are gonna build, um, which a lot of people know the story. It didn't really pan out the way that it was, but I just got this passion for the whole concept. and. Um, I'm on my third stint on the park board. And so I think I have heard from every user of every park asset in the city of Lake Oswego on, I think now I'm probably like seventh year of being a board member. I'm into my third stint. So swimmers and the golfers and the tennis players, I know we need more facilities um, to recreate in. I knew, know we need more room for programming. We need more room for our parks department who've been scattered all around. So um, I'm super excited about bringing the perspective that I've had over um, the last several years. Uh, John, uh, John Wallen and I are neighbors. Um, next time we're gonna, well, I can have a socially distanced, hi neighbor. Um, we live in the Forest Highlands area near Lake Oswego High School. Uh, my kids uh, are now almost 20 and almost 24. So. Uh, I got to teach my son learned to swim in the pool, but in terms of their ability to recreate there, probably not going to happen, but I, I don't care when it happens. I'm going to be there. Um, I might be a senior citizen, but who knows? Not really. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Thank you, Sandy. We're glad that you're here and glad that there are so many neighbors too. It's really cool. And folks are like, Hey, we're neighbors. This is fun. Yeah. Let's hear from Tony, then Sid and Sarah. Hi everyone, um, my name is Tony Vandenberg. Um, I'm an executive director, project management at the school district, um, oversee the bond program and um, our facilities operations. Um, I'm pretty excited about this project. Um, at the passage of our bond, it was a question of whether or not we were going to put a couple of band-aids on our existing pool and, and carry on, or could it be something bigger? And, you know, these conversations have been going on for quite some time since I've been here and uh, in, in working with the city um, and our school board, um, we were able to come up with a plan to make this thing happen and, and, and get a whole lot more out of it, brand new facility um, with all these amenities. So I'm very excited to, to be part of this. Sid, hello. Hi, Allison. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Sid Scott. I'm the founding principal of Scott Edwards Architecture. Uh, we're a Portland-based design firm. Uh, we, we do work all over the state of Oregon and, and really all over the country. Uh, but we really, really enjoy working with communities on projects that make a difference for the citizens of the community. And so uh, could not be more excited about this project and uh, getting started tonight on it, because we think this is really gonna make a big difference in Lake Oswego. Sid. Hi, Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah Ellison. I'm one of the co-chairs on the Parks Board, and I started serving on the board um, 
almost two years ago now and right after the parks bond passed. And so I got to be involved in the conversation of um, what we were gonna recommend doing with the money. And um, uh, I got to be involved in the conversation where we came to the realization that it was an amazing opportunity to partner with the school district. And um, that led to the parks board recommending to city council that they consider a partnership um, for this project. So um, that was really exciting to be involved with that. And I wanted to continue to be involved with the project. I'm a parent of two little boys, a six-year-old and a nine-year-old. And so um, like a couple other folks have mentioned, you know, we have to drive a really long way to find a place for them to swim. And it's very hard to find swimming lessons. Um, they're in high demand and it's, it's hard to get a, a time slot. So um, we know the importance of a facility like this in our community. Um, I live in the Hallinan neighborhood, so I'm not too far away from y'all over um, up the road from me. And um, yeah, very excited to be involved with this project um, on the PAC. Thanks, Sarah. We're glad that you're here. And I can see some, some running around in the background. So it's just, it's, I, I'm always excited to see life going on in people's homes. It's kind of amazing that we get to be in each other's homes in this bizarre but, but strange and kind of cool way. How about we go to Ivan and then Andra, um, if you want to each say hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Ivan Anderholm. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director for the City of Lake Oswego. I've been with the City of Lake Oswego going on 10 years now. Um, but you'll know, you'll find out more about what I do professionally, but uh, like many of you, um, I'm, I'm a father of three. Um, I have a 20-year-old, 17-year-old, and a five-year-old. Um, like some of you, um, I do have a COVID puppy, a four-month-old uh, dog. So if you see my screen go off like you did earlier today, that's because somebody wanted to go outside, um, and I'm home alone. So um, anyway, I'm super excited about this project. Um, my background before um, I came to Lake Oswego, I was out in Eastern Oregon and, and built a very successful uh, seasonal uh, pool facility for a community out there. And prior to that, I worked for the YMCA um, both in California and Iowa at full service uh, facilities. So I've seen firsthand what the benefit of a facility um, like this has on a community, the health of a community, the wellness of a community. Um, and really, this is, um, you know, we hope that this becomes the cornerstone of uh, what we do in, in parks and recreation. And we're, we're kind of tired of the nomadic life. Um, in a little over nine years, I've been in three different buildings and not sure where we're going to be tomorrow. So um, it, it, it'll be nice and uh, super excited to be where we're at right now. Thanks, Ivan. Hi, Andra. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Andra, I'm a designer at SEA and I've been helping along with this project so far. Um, pretty excited for this resource. I think I have very fond memories of growing up a very short walk away from my local YMCA and using the pool and facilities there. I mean, how to swim there, I'm going to the gym there, um, doing their stuff with personal trainers when I was doing high school sports. So. Um, going to use that to sort of just inspire, hopefully, a good design for this building. Thanks, Sandra. It's always cool when your professional and personal kind of lives, you get to work on something cool that you feel excited about. Did I miss anybody? Oh, Erica. Oh, my gosh, Erica. Hello. I knew I missed <laughs> That's all right. I am Erica Baggin with Scott Edwards Architecture. I've been there for five and a half years. And I also worked on the Newburgh project, the Shehalem uh, Aquatic Center. Um, I'm very excited about this project. We had a great experience with, experience with the Newburgh project. And this is such an important project type for our community. Uh, everybody comes enthusiastic with their opinions and very passionate about, um, about the project. So um, I'm very excited to to make something that your community will be very proud of. Thanks, Erica. 
Okay, thanks folks. It's wonderful to get to know you and we will continue to get to know each other and hopefully see some puppies over the next um, number of months that we're working together. Um, I did notice and Ariella alerted me, we had accidentally disabled the ability to raise your hand, but we've since fixed that. So you all should be able to raise your hands now. And I did see somebody test it briefly. So if you were the tester, thank you. Oh, yep, there you go, testing, perfect. Um, so with that, Let's start the onboarding process. So this is a perfect time. If you do have a question or a comment, you can raise that hand or you can pop it into the chat and let me know. But I'm gonna ask Ariella to share a screen and to bring up the charter document. So you all should have received this when you got the agenda that's had a slight change just in switching around to agenda items. Um, and I'm not going to read the entire document, but just want to kind of draw your attention to a few key things. Um, and then we can see if that works for, you know, if our protocols work, if anybody has any questions, any clarifications, and then we'll move on to probably the more fun stuff um, and hear from Jennifer and uh, Bruce and Jenny and the rest of the team to talk more about the project itself. So. We have some text here that talks about kind of what all of this is. And again, we're gonna get into the project background shortly, but if you can go down just a little bit, Ariella, and maybe I, I know I'm on a kind of a tiny screen, but if we can make it just slightly bigger too. And I wanna talk a little bit about your charge here. So you have the wonderful task of acting as a sounding board for the project team and for the project overall. So what you can expect that to look like is that folks like um, Bruce and Jenny and Sid and Jennifer and Tony and Ivan will come to you and say, hey, we're, we need some thoughts and some feedback on these pieces. And you'll be asked to give that feedback. You're not a group charged with making a formal recommendation. So for those of you on boards who've served on some of these committees in the past, we're not anticipating voting necessarily and making a formal, this is what we're recommending to council or to the school board. But because we have so many different interests at the table or in our virtual room here, um, you'll be giving sort of from your perspective, and Chris, I love how you phrase it. You don't really have, I think, a stake in it or, or, a, or a specific interest that you're representing, but from where you are as a coach, as a, as a council member, as a, a father or a mother or a student or an active recreator, just giving that feedback and helping the project team shape what goes forward. There might be times when as a facilitator, I ask you, okay, how many people agree with this to get an idea of temperature check? Not necessarily a formal vote, but to understand levels of agreement in the group. And we might have two very different perspectives that rise to the surface, that's okay. We'll kind of discuss through those things. Staff might ask you additional questions, but we'll be summarizing the feedback from this group and using it um, also with the other forms of community engagement that we'll talk about shortly in the next part of our meeting uh, to kind of give the team a fuller picture of, okay, what are the most important things as we get into this uh, schematic design phase of the recreation and aquatic center? So I'll keep going a little bit and then I'll, and then I'll pause for questions. Ariella, if you can scroll down a little bit more, let's talk about what folks have been signed up for. So we're anticipating um, that we'll meet about five times through August, 2021. Um, those dates are still kind of to be confirmed. So we'll be, we may be reaching out um, between Jenny. I think Jenny will likely be reaching out or, or myself to confirm some of those dates, but we'll be having five meetings. Um, we're not, in, because we're not a formal voting body, we're not looking at a quorum, but it is really critical that we get as many folks as possible in the room, whether we're meeting virtually or we've come to a place where we can meet in person because public health directives have changed, fingers crossed. Um, so as much as possible, we'd ask that you try to make it to these meetings, but we won't um, be looking for, you know, seven people or eight people have to be here to officially hold the meeting. We'll note that whoever is able to come, they're able to come and we'll hold it as such. Because of also the nature of the meeting, we're not going to be using alternates. Um, I'm going to guess that there's only one Coach Okai. And the fact that you are here in this meeting and part of these conversations, you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna learn about a lot about the project, about some of the specific needs. And if we're using an alternate and that person is coming in without some of that context of the conversations that you've had throughout the other meetings, things can be lost. 
So as much as possible, we are going to ask that you try to prioritize these meetings and come to them. They're not too many, so hopefully it's not too much of a burden on your schedules and your lives. Um, and we won't be using alternates for this process. If you're unable to come to a meeting, please reach out. Um, you can reach out to Jenny. You can reach out to me. Um, Jenny will be the primary point of contact, but let us know and we'll work with you. You know, if you want to submit some feedback in writing or let us know what you think, um, we can also have a phone call with you. We'll work with you to, to make sure that your, your voice is here at the table, even if something unexpected comes up and you're unable to make it to our meetings. Okay, Ariella, let's go down a little bit more. And I'll just talk briefly about meeting guidelines. So a lot of these things I'm sure, you know, we do all the time when we're working with people. Um, but a couple of things I just like to point out for groups and also things I'll be sort of watching for and helping the group with is um, if you are the, the kind of person who you know you have a lot of passion and a lot of ideas and you tend to be the first person to speak in a group, that's great. We want to hear from you. I'd also ask you to be conscious of that and to make some space for other people. And there might be times if I've heard from the same person consistently, I'll do my best to gently ask you to maybe hold that comment while we offer some space for other people to share their thoughts. Um, so just we'll notice those dynamics and kind of work through them when we get to our discussion pieces. Typically in meetings, I'd ask for folks to avoid side conversations when we're meeting in person. I think digitally, the temptation to multitask is real. I know I have my emails going, I'm getting texts or calls. As I'd ask if you can put your phone away or, or leave it to the side, if you can focus on meetings um, so that we can really be present to the task at hand listen to each other and uh, avoid our digital side conversations. I'd certainly appreciate that. And I think it'll help make our meetings more efficient. We may also have, you know, a lot of you expressed deep roots with this project, you know, for you've been here and following along from the nascent stages. And some of you have been the decision makers that have helped make this come to life. And that's so cool. There could also be things that come up that, have to do with something that happened maybe five, six, 10, 20 years ago. And I, I want as much as possible as to look at that bullet point that asks when, when discussing the past, let's try to link it to the current discussion. There could be decisions that were made that you're unhappy with or things that you know didn't go the right way in the past that maybe you feel like, oh, I, I want, want to kind of rehash this or air this with the group. And I might ask you, um, in those moments when we're bringing up things in the past to how does this connect to the conversation that we're having today? Um, so just think about those connections because there is a lot of history here and that's not to say that it doesn't matter, but let's make sure that we're working together to move forward and to bring this project into construction and into the need that you all spoke really so eloquently about that this community really needs to see um, the pool and a recreation center. Um, if you do have any media inquiries, that sometimes happens with community groups, if, especially if there's something kind of interesting going on and it's a slower media day. But if somebody reaches out to you, we just ask that you uh, notify Jenny, um, the project staff, Jenny Anderson, of any media requests um, so that she can work with um, them to get an official statement from the city. If you do want to give a statement to the press, we just ask that you speak on your behalf. So not on behalf of the, the entire committee, not as the pack, but as yourself. You're welcome to give um, those statements to the press, but just give Jenny a heads up so she knows what's going on. Um, and I think those, aside from that, those are pretty kind of things that we would expect to do to listen respectfully, to keep an open mind, um, to focus our conversations on what the agenda topic and to try not get too far down other tangents. But again, my job is to help us through all of that. And then down below, we have some of the additional roles and responsibilities. I think this will really be illuminated when we get into our presentation shortly. So I'm not going to go too detailed into that. But you also have contact information for Jenny, if you'd like to get in touch with her about any of the meeting logistics, about a meeting that you're not able to make. If you have any questions about um, the project as a whole, Bruce's email is excuse me, also there. So you can reach out to Jenny and Bruce and just some of the ways that all these different pieces will be working together. So that's detailed in our um, project roles and responsibility. And then Ariella, can you scroll down to the very bottom just to make sure I haven't missed anything? Great. 
And then the last piece is that we are opening these meetings up for public observation. So you can share the link if you have an, a neighbor who might be interested and they'd like to watch while they make dinner or hang out, or they're just particularly interested in public processes. Um, so folks who are joining, we're glad that you're here and we will be uh, recording all of these meetings and also developing a meeting summary so we can know what we talked about. Okay, cool. That's a lot of governance talk. So Ariella, I think we can stop sharing a screen. Oh, my email is also in the roles and responsibilities if you'd like to reach out to me. You know, ways that we can make our meetings even more awesome and efficient and meaningful. I'd love to hear any thoughts or ideas that you have. So I know that that's kind of the boring stuff, but does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, hopes, dreams, fears, ideas? kind of about our, our process and how we work together. This is also the time where I will hold a little bit of awkward silence because um, sometimes it takes people a while to get that mute button or to wave me down or to raise their hand. So we'll just sit in awkward silence together for a brief minute. Okay, your nonverbal body language, thank you, John, is indicating that you're feeling pretty good about this and that this all seems what you signed up for and how you would expect to work together. So PAC members, if you can just give me a thumbs up if you're feeling good about our protocols, about your charge and purpose, awesome. Okay, I'm seeing thumbs up all around. So we're gonna not formally vote on that, but sort of consider that, hey, we're feeling good about our purpose and charge. This is a good way for us to work together. And if we do need to change anything down the line, it's a living document and I'm super open to figuring out ways that we can do that. Um, and who knows, we might even be meeting in person. I don't, I don't know, who knows, down the line. So with that, I think we're gonna end that charter item and I'm gonna turn it over to our wonderful project team, and a lot of the folks are here, and I think we're gonna start, Jennifer's gonna share a screen and, and start to walk us through a presentation. So you hear a little bit from the project members. We're gonna plan to kind of steam on through this. It, it's, it's, there's some pictures, there's quite a bit of information you're gonna hear from different folks on the team. So this is another time where I'll, I'll be moderating the chat. Um, Jennifer, you, you might have a hard time seeing the chat with your screen being shared. So I'll pause if there are questions that come up or if I see hands, I'll be moderating that. And otherwise we'll just uh, hear from the team and then come back together. So Jennifer, over to you. All right, are you seeing the presentation? Is everyone seeing it? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Good. I have three screens and sometimes I share the wrong screen. <laughs> Um, so thanks everybody. Like Allison said, we are going to kind of roll through this a little bit quickly. Um, not too many slides here to share. And I'm going to start, I think we start off with Ivan actually, um, to give kind of some overall high level background um, on that past study that some of you may or may not have been involved with. Um, and Ivan, are you ready to yeah. chat a little bit about that past work? I, I sure am. I sure right. am. And, and Tony, if you're there and you want to add anything, go ahead and feel free to do so. Um, so uh, most of you know, um, and if you don't, then um, hopefully we'll be able to answer the questions. But this project is really a continuation of work that the uh, district took the lead in um, last year. And uh, when they were looking to evaluate their existing pool and, and what move to, to move forward with. So um, I was actually um, on the superintendent's task force along with um, a couple of you that are here um, where we evaluated and worked with um, a uh, consultant out of uh, Colorado called Ballard King to evaluate um, true need for the, especially the competitive um, side of the pool, uh, along with uh, water polo. Um, and so in that um, work, um, there was um, some centering on what would provide the level of service that the district was looking for um, to provide for their student athletes, understanding that um, in the real world, um, the, the cost does matter. Um, so, 
Um, so that work really resulted in probably the, the better defined portion of this entire project, which is the, the 25 yard stretch competitive pool. Um, and moving forward at the same time that the district was doing that, the city had engaged a little bit earlier in um, evaluating um, finding a home for the Parks and Recreation Department and finding a place where we could continue to offer uh, the programs that we've offered to the community for uh, the past close to 20 years in, in various sites. So we went through a process um, with an architect, uh, Robertson Sherwood out of uh, Eugene, did some conceptual planning um, and without evaluating um, any of the district sites, because again, at this time, both the district and the city were kind of operating um, in our own bubbles, uh, we had evaluated sites and had come up with municipal golf course as a suitable site for a recreation center without a pool. Um, and so we, we took a look at that. We were asked by council to, to move that forward. And then as we went to move it forward, um, some great thinkers out there and policymakers, um, uh, both on the school board and the city council, um, two of them are actually part of this pack, um, kind of pumped the brakes and said, wait a second, we're talking about resources that are Lake Oswego resources. Have we looked at and have we considered if we leverage those resources what type of uh, level of service we could provide for, for the community. Um, so as we move forward and the district move forward, um, we partnered with the district and worked with the district on, on their examination of not only the competitive swimming pool to, to meet their student athlete needs, but then also um, the feasibility of combining other uh, dry land and recreational um, pool amenities and um, looked at the pros and cons of um, leveraging resources to provide uh, the best bang for the buck and the greatest level of service to the community for with the dollars that were available. And so what resulted from that is um, a memorandum of understanding uh, between our, our city council and the school board um, moving forward, which is you know where we're at now where we're, we're engaged with an architectural firm and engineering um, consultants as well as operational consultants. And we're taking the concept that was uh, brought forward and developed as our partnership developed when the district was leading it towards a competitive pool need and, and identifying that and we're moving that forward. So within that, and I think we, we talked about it and it was in um, some of the, the information that you received earlier. Um, but really it talks about the memorandum of understanding talks about the key elements. So the key elements is the construction of the facility at the municipal golf course property. Um, Tony and I led um, an effort with interaction and engagement with the community, looking at both uh, school district and uh, city owned properties um, that would be appropriate or could um, handle this type of facility and could provide the type of access we're looking for. Um, and uh, we, after doing that and evaluating the different properties that both the city and the school district have, we, we ended up on the municipal golf course property. Um, with that, um, like I said, um, building on the work that has been done before, uh, the competitive tank of a 25 yard stretch competition swimming pool um, was included in the memorandum of, of understanding. Um, a warm water recreation pool, um, and I'll be honest with you, that's something that the city is very interested in. We've had uh, community members reach out to us about specifically about um, more recreational swimming. Um, but we haven't been able to quantify exactly what that is. So I think that, you know, as we move forward in this and our public engagement and our survey, our initial surveys with the public, we're going to be really trying to narrow down on what that looks like and what it is. Um, dry activity exercise rooms. Those are um, the types of rooms that we've utilized everywhere from um, uh, utilizing some school spaces to the West End building to uh, Palisades. And now currently we offer some of those in, in a local church in the community. 
Um, but those are everything from art to dance to exercise to language art um, for adults um, and also um, respite for, for folks that are taking care of, um, of their older um, parents or, or relatives. Um, obviously, classrooms falls into that category. Um, offices would be nice. Um, and then uh, looking at the opportunity to add um, the wellness component, which is the cardio functional weight room type facility for the community to access, as well as um, a community accessible gymnasium. Um, we, we are very lucky to be in Lake Oswego with the number of schools and the number of excellent facilities we have. Um, but we in Parks and Recreation routinely hear from folks that don't have kids um, that maybe have time at 10 o'clock in the morning and would like to access to a gymnasium and, and go either shoot basketball or play pickleball or whatever it may be. And um, it's a very difficult thing to do um, in Lake Oswego because there isn't a large space um, for people to recreate in. So those are the main components, um, the key elements that are in the memorandum of understanding uh, between the city and, and the school district. Great, thanks Ivan. Yeah. Sorry, I do have a question. Can I jump in or, okay. Yeah, um, go ahead. So, so the components that are in the MOU, um, is that, are those required then because they're in the agreement? Um, I wouldn't say that they're required. They're what we're aspiring to complete in this in this project. Um, as we work through this with with you all, um, what we're going to find is that it's a little bit aspirational in that the previous work that was done, um, the dollars don't stretch that far. Um, but our city council felt as though we needed to take a fresh perspective and look at it. Um, as we were moving this project forward to see um, all the spaces that we could build in leveraging the, the resources that the district and the city have. Um, the pools, I think, are, are going to be included. And then um, the other um, amenities, obviously, there will have to be some sort of classroom meeting space. Um, there will have to be some level of offices. And I don't think that that's been clearly defined as how much or how many. Um, and then the cardio and gymnasium is just a, uh, those are things that the community has asked for um, uh, for years um, to have access to. So, but those are what the district in the, in the city did agree to, to move forward and, and envision the, the center having. Does that answer your question, Cole? Thanks. All right, well, I flipped ahead to the timeline um, and this kind of has a couple things represented here. There's a lot of information, but it, it gives you a graphic kind of an overall schedule of, of what we're looking at right now. Um, you know, where we're at here kind of at the end of a pre-design and assessment, assessment phase and embarking on the next phase, um, schematic design phase. And just looking at overall, it, it, it's still, we still have a long way to go. We're just gonna, at the beginning, but um, kind of gives you an overall idea. And then up at the top here, Allison's got a good summary of all the public engagement kind of aspects of the project. And maybe Allison, you'll talk about a little bit about that right now. Yeah, um, and Jenny, feel free to chime in. So um, my, my team, J uh, JLA, really myself and Ariella will be working closely with uh, Jenny, Ivan, Bruce, and Jennifer to conduct some additional outreach activities. You're a core component of ensuring that, you know, community perspectives are reflected in what happens in this design phase. And eventually, as Ivan alluded to, kind of what those final decisions are um, into, into what happens at this aquatic and recreation center. So we'll be meeting regularly with you through August of 2021. We've got some uh, dates up there, but again, don't worry, we'll make, be sure that those are confirmed and shared with you as they get solidified. But we're anticipating to meet again with you in February, likely February 10th, but we'll go through that at the end of the meeting. 
And around that same time, we'll be looking at a suite of outreach activities, including a, a community meeting, um, open to kind of anybody in the community who'd like to join and to share some of the things that you'll be looking at in upcoming meetings with the broader community and get their feedback. We'll also be doing an, what we call an online open house, which is like if sort of an online version of that community meeting. It'll be sharing the information that Jennifer and her team are coming up with, getting feedback from folks, but it's also a link that can be shared easily. Um, so, you know, if your friends and family and neighbors can't make it to that community meeting, they have another way to weigh in and to share their feedback. And we'll also be holding a meeting with neighbors. So that's our first kind of round of check-ins uh, with the community that we'll be having. And then we'll be doing a second round of the same thing. So meeting with you, having a community meeting um, and having a neighborhood meeting uh, in the summer and fall. And rather than an online open house kind of asking for digital feedback, when we wrap things up, we'll probably be getting to a point where we're ready to share what's been decided and have more of a celebration. Those are kind of a really wonderful way to circle back with people who maybe just gave a little bit of input here and there, but to build some excitement about what's happening that uh, you all will be instrumental in helping to facilitate. Um, there's also going to be some surveys that will be happening regularly, and maybe Jenny can speak a little bit more to that at the end of the meeting. Um, but there's some kind of in some ways, specific things that the team is really keen to get public input on. Um, so we have a survey coming up that Ivan alluded to uh, asking about some of the rec recreation pool features. So those will be shared out with folks. And, you know, as uh, community advocates on this project advisory committee, we'd ask that you help us in sharing those out um, as, they, as we publish those links and get those surveys live and have these opportunities that you do share them with friends and family and folks that you think are interested. I'm just gonna give a brief shout out to Jazeel because she's already like, hey, I have friends who'd be interested in watching this meeting. Can I get these links? So those kinds of things we really welcome and you helping us get the word out in addition to the work that Jenny will be doing um, with the rest of the team to, to promote these engagement opportunities. Jenny, did you wanna say anything more about that? That was great. I'll just, a little bit later, I'll talk about the survey. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and I guess any questions on engagement opportunities? If you briefly zoned out, the short story is more to come. There'll be some cool ways for the rest of the public to get involved. Um, and we'll be meeting with you regularly. Okay, Jennifer, back over to you. All right. Okay, so we have a few slides just going through our... Um, design process and what we've been doing so far. So as we came on board, um, the Parks Department really started to feed us a lot more information that helps to inform how the building and the site develops. Um, that included a geotech report, a full topographic survey, an arborist report. Uh, there's a traffic study going. All of those things sort of influence what we do on the site. Um, so this slide just sort of is, is our kind of initial analysis of just looking at the sun, like basic stuff like the sun angles, the, the view opportunities, the relationships to other parks in the area, um, starting to look at what needs to go on in terms of improvements on Stafford Road, uh, getting a new 12 foot wide multi-use path on Stafford Road right in front of this facility is a big, is a big component that will be coming up. Um, we also, in that process, sort of really started to identify a good what we call the best build zone. So kind of, you know, good grade to align with the existing clubhouse, um, where how that fits in with the trees and the golf course and just sort of hone in on, on, on that. Um, and then that kind of has led us to a little bit more of a detailed site plan. Again, locating where that building is there. Um, looking at really how parking is going to fit on the site. So we're, right now we're looking at about just over 160 spaces. Um, we're also looking at a left turn lane off of Stafford, um, some other connections off of Stafford, some uh, internal pathways um, through the site over to Cloverleaf, also around the building, um, where mechanical access happens, where kind of that main entry happens, um, but still really, pretty early on in the process, but kind of honing down on what we can, what we can really do on the site. Um, and we actually just had a pre-app uh, meeting with the city of Lake Oswego today. So we're just, you know, in that early phase of learning 
um, learning more about the project. And then I'm going to move into the, a couple options, um, three options that we're looking at a little more detail on the building. Um, we just showed these to the Parks Department in the school district this week. Um, so really, really preliminary work. Um, but each kind of building, kind of building on what we've learned in the past and what we've heard from our group so far. So I'll say with all of these options, um, they're including all of those program elements from your past study in 2019. Um, and, and still, you know, we talked a little bit about this, the ones that are highlighted in red are kind of still on the edge or outside of that base budget um, zone. But they all include the basic pool elements that we heard about. The first two have um, uh, recreation pools a little bit larger than what the base study showed. So those are about 2,600 square feet of water area. And then the third option has, um, is looking at a larger one. So with these three options, we looked at kind of advantages and disadvantages of both of those. And this first one is we're terming rec pool south. So the recreation pool is more oriented to the southern side of the building. This is the smallest footprint of the three. So in terms of an advantage, it's a little closer to your base budget. <laughs> so we, we see that as a little bit of an advantage. Um, Circulation and connection is really clear to all of the spaces from the main entry, immediately oriented to the pools or all the fitness spaces and the locker rooms. Um, the first aid and lifeguard rooms are, have a really good adjacency to both of the water bodies. Um, that's been something that's uh, been found to be very important with our group. Um, and then we also saw the Southern exposure to the rec pool and kind of visibility to Stafford Road um, and opportunities for Southern light and outdoor space. Disadvantages of this one, um, no direct connection for the locker rooms to the competitive pool. So that's another one we're trying to really solve of how we can get this main core of locker rooms to serve both of these pools really well. Um, this one, because of its smaller size, doesn't include multi-purpose group fitness space. So we have some fitness spaces here, but it doesn't include kind of those specialized, maybe aerobic or dance rooms. Um, and then another disadvantage we saw, there wasn't a great connection to the golf course from the recreation pool. So that not the best views um, available for that from the recreation pool. And the next option we're calling recreation pool north. So again, um, similar recreation pool water size, about 2,600 square feet. The building size has increased a little bit. So we're at 50,000 square feet. Um, and then just to run through the advantages and disadvantages on this one, what we do like about this is the locker rooms are now really central and have a really good connection to both the competitive pool or the recreation pool. We've also included a separate competition entry down here. So there's a good kind of synergy of the aquatic spaces. Um, there's great visual connection of both water bodies to the golf course. Um, and then this one does include some of those multi-purpose group fitness spaces. So we saw those as all good advantages. Um, disadvantages. There isn't a direct connection with the competition pool to the lifeguard and first aid rooms. So those are now slid down here. They have a good connection with the rec pool, but not so great with the competition pool. Um, other, um, other things about it overall, the circulation from the main entry is a little bit longer and um, not as direct as the previous schemes. And there's no um, real good, great Southern exposure or visibility to the street from the recreation pool. So with this option, we're just seeing there's a lot more solid wall facing the street um, than the prior option. And then the final one we're calling the large rec pool. So this one is your largest, the largest option we're looking at um, so far at just over 52,000 square feet. And in this one that you can see the recreation pool is much larger now. It actually has a connection all the way through the building in terms of visibility 
if, uh, if you wanted it to. Um, advantages of this one, lifeguard, um, lifeguard and first aid room, really a good connection between the two pools and also adjacency to that competition pool entry. Um, we saw there was some good um, adjacencies with that location. Um, again, has a really good clear circulation and connection from the main entry to the pools and all of the other spaces. Um, and then, like I mentioned, there's a good visual connection through the building at the recreation pool. It also includes um, the multi-purpose group fitness spaces and just larger fitness spaces in general. So these spaces got a much got much bigger, not much bigger, but were were expanded in this in this option. Um, and then disadvantages because it is the largest building, it's it's probably the most expensive option that we're looking at. Um, and then it also has a similar issue with where there's no direct connection of those locker room spaces to the competition pool. Really good for the recreation pool, but not so great on, on the competition pool side. So that's where we're at with those. Um, I, can ask, I can ask about questions right now, or we can move on to Jenny's part of it. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe well that 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 was a was kind of a lot. So why don't we pause for, some, <laughs> pause for some questions? And I see some hands. And Jennifer, maybe just to clarify for folks, yeah. I think you you mentioned and it's written on the slides. But these are super conceptual. And I believe in future meetings with this group, we're going to be really deep diving into this and giving more of an opportunity for your feedback. So this is kind of our first flush for you to know where things are and um, to share some of your but we'll really be giving you an opportunity for like getting deep into this yeah. at the next meeting. Is that correct, Jennifer? That's a great point. Cause you know, we kind of did even go back and forth about how deep we're going to get into it with this meeting to begin with. Cause we knew there was a lot of kind of buildup and um, just sort of intro to happen. So that is our intent at the next meeting. We'll really get more into these options and really talk more about them. Um, you know, talk about the configuration of the competition pool, what's the best way to do that. Talk about the recreation pool amenities and ADA access. And, and at that point too, we'll have, I think Jenny's, um, we'll talk about the survey, but the results of the survey and sort of some community feedback on that. Um, we'd like to talk more about those locker rooms and guard rooms and and things that our group have, has recognized as important, are they important to everybody on the pack as well? Um, and then also talking about the dry side program and recreation amenities. Um, so all of those things, we wanna hear from you, but um, we won't have quite enough time at this meeting to get really into it. <laughs> Cool. Thanks. So I guess this is just your like your taster, your Emma's bouche before like the main course comes in our next meeting. Yeah. Um, Sandy, Sandy, I'm going to get to your hand in a second because I'm going to give a question. But Sandy just asked briefly in the chat if you can repeat the square footage on the rec pool in the first two options, Jennifer. Um, Twenty six hundred square feet water area on the first two options. And the study, I think, had twenty four hundred square feet. Um, and you'll see in the shapes of these, you know, we're, we're looking at what, what to include, some lap lane space, um, some kids play areas, some moving water. So we're starting to look at what those are. Um, whereas the previous study, I think, just looked at a rectangular warm water body. So it's a little bit, these are a little bit beyond that. So um, I'm going to go to Alkai, then Sarah, and Cole, you unmuted. So do you have a question as well? Uh, the third, the third option, the the square footage was fifty seven hundred or fifty nine hundred. The biggest one is fifty two thousand four hundred. Okay. Okay, let's go over to Alkai and then Sarah. Yeah, first I was curious if that's the footprint I noticed in all three. That's the footprint. Is that what we're being held to in terms of? Uh, the area of the facilities, the total area of the facilities? Well, the total area is to, I think is still definitely in flex. We're, cause the first option I think we're at um, 
47,000 and range up to 52,000. Um, well, so the area I, is not set by- I guess by, what I'm actually more specifically, just how it's kind of on an elbow, mm. it seems like a strange um, design when you're talking about a pool needing sort of a, you know, a rectangular space, even maybe the rec pool might need that mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then also um, keeping in mind that the competition pool is in fact for both high school swim teams and water polo teams. So we'd probably like to maximize um, the opportunity to, for both teams to, to train at the same time because of the limited time we were mm -hmm. talking about two teams trying to schedule on a daily basis. Um, uh, and then finally, if we're gonna be holding competitions and even just on daily usage, um, to go back a couple of steps with the two of you that worked on the Shehalem project, I've known Jim McMasters for quite some time and so I'm real familiar with that pool. And I think um, the locker rooms really need to be connected, I would think, to the competition pool just because of the traffic flow. Mm -hmm. So that's my last concern initially. Okay. Okay. Um, Sarah, let's hear from you. Hi, I, since y'all worked on the pool in Newburgh, I was wondering, I know that some folks have visited that pool and have a sense of what it looks like. What's the square footage of the warm water pool in Newburgh? So we have something to kind of benchmark it against when we're looking at these options. Erica, do you remember exactly? I know, I know about, but you probably know exactly. Um, I can pull it up momentarily, but it's over 5,000. I think it's about 5,500 square feet. Yep. Yeah, somewhere around there. So it is quite a bit bigger than all of the three that we're showing here in terms of warm water. Sarah, does that get your question? Is that good? Yeah, so the largest one we're looking at right now is 5,200, is that right? Um, the largest warm water we're looking at is 3,300. Oh, 3,300, yes. that down wrong. Okay. And just to, clar to clarify, we're using warm water and recreation interchangeably, right? Mm -hmm. like, yes, I am. Yes. And when I say the area, I'm talking about just the water, not the building. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool, thanks. Folks, I, I also just wanna mm -hmm. say, as someone who is not a designer and, um, and does not have a background in architecture, if there's ever, you're ever like, what is that word? somebody else is probably thinking about it too. Um, and I know there's a lot of folks here who are probably very oriented with square footage. I don't think that way. So feel free to ask those questions or you can pop a message to me in the chat um, if you don't wanna call yourself out. Um, Jazeel had a question in the chat. Jazeel, do you wanna say this out loud or would you like me to read it for you? I, I think you might be having some video issues, so. Yeah, so I thought I can, I can speak to that. So I apologize for the video issue. Uh, <clears throat> my question is uh, similarly to Coach's question, right? So we're, we're assuming these square footage spaces for each one of these areas based on the total square footage of the building. So is there a reason why the building has to stay within those numbers? That's question number one. Um, and then question number two is if we look at the larger rec pool uh, area, what is the risk of us not being able to get there since one of the uh, disadvantages is that it's most expensive, right? So is there, what, what would it take for us as a community to get there? I think I can talk a little bit about a couple of those points that you raised. Um, the square footage of the competition pool is is fairly fixed at this point that was that was done earlier um, and is memorialized in our our memorandum of understanding similarly um, the rec pool is somewhat fixed and based on our early operational models um, we're also balancing the ongoing operational costs of this facility um, which is driven by revenue uh, and that operation operating cost so there's kind of a balance there, which is where we're landing on these square footages. Of course, gymnasiums are generally set based on the size of the gyms. Um, they can they can expand a little bit more 
and you know dry land space around the pools also can can maneuver a little bit but a lot of the square footages that we're we're coming up with are based on our earlier study um, and some of our detailed operational work which which gets really deep into the anticipated usage of the facility um, over the over the years and and that work will continue to get fine-tuned as we move forward and design a little bit more does that answer some of that yes. yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Chris, go right ahead. So this might be way premature, um, but I'm just wondering if there might be uh, a possibility to discuss other design options that had, you know, a bigger pool while leaving out some other aspects, you know, given that when you build a pool, it's kind of done, right? Um, and so just, just curious about like what, what other sorts of you know, this is a conversation we've had at the Parks Board, and I'm sure other people have had, you know, is, is it better to do lots of things in a mediocre way or just kind of pick the things you're going to nail and, and, and do that? And so I'm just curious if there's, um, you know, it doesn't have to be perhaps thought out to this level, but, you know, what, what could it look like if, you know, we, if one or two of these different uh, things were omitted? So I'm not on the project team, but I'm just playing back what you just said. <laughs> um, one of the things that I would think about if, if, you know, is we have to have a pool because that is part of what this project does. Um, but there is also an interest in the, in this community to have the space for other things, right? Like one of our uh, participants here is, is a dancer. So if we lack the ability to provide that, flexibility in the space that we have, are we going to lack support also from the community for this project, right? So I think that the the, the risk that we would run into is then, um, are we then omitting somebody's voice that maybe once supported this project? But again, not running the project, so. <laughs> Shazil, thank you for that. Um, Gosh, this is kind of a classic conundrum for, for these kinds of projects. I facilitate a lot of community advisory committees and you are not alone in kind of this, okay, balancing things. Ivan, you just unmuted yourself. Are you hoping to, to chime in here? Well, I was hoping to just a little bit and not, hopefully not muddy the waters um, anymore. Um, no pun intended there. Um, to Chris's question about, can we, you know, conceptualize something that, and, and what if you didn't do this, what would it mean to the other part of the facility? I think um, Tony started to answer it and, and did a good job and, and we're still refining. Part of um, what we're looking at um, in the overall facility design and operations is trying to have a balanced operation as well. Um, you know, one, one of the fears, and, and I'll speak, and if, if uh, either, Board member Wallen or Councilman Wenlin wants to speak, but um, one of the issues with a facility like this is that you have to have a facility that has a balanced um, offering. Um, we know that the competitive tank, based on um, swimming tank, based on you know everybody else that operates them, is kind of something that we're we're going to have to subsidize the operation of. Um, good, bad, or otherwise. It, it's just kind of, that's, that's the nature. The amount of amenities that we put into the recreational pool um, has a direct correlation with, um, you know, the cost recovery and how the aquatics overall operates um, programmatically. And it has to be a balance between attraction. And this is my own experience. It needs to be a balance between just attraction for people just wanting to come in with their family and have a safe place to recreate and also programming. Um, from an operational standpoint, programming where we're doing swim lessons, we're doing exercise classes and things like that, um, have a, a much better uh, return um, on the investment when we, when we put those into our business model. Um, the same goes for the dry recreation side. And right now, um, we're in a situation where uh, we are fairly neutral with um, the direct costs of all of the recreational programs that we offer through the department. Um, 
And what we'd like to do is be able to actually show them contributing to the cost of the facilities that they're in, which is, is more of an indirect cost in the way that we account for it. Um, and we believe that we can do that if we can have an area where we're, we're doing that. Currently, we're paying you know, leases and rents for facilities, um, additional insurance because we're offsite. Um, there, there's a bunch of costs that are involved. So um, yes, we can look at that. And I think that that's, you know, part of um, our design team is, is looking at. I think that the charge that we've been given by our city council and by the school board is to move forward with the components that are in the MOU. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully be able to, to make those fit within the budgetary dollars that they've given us to do. Now, as we move forward in this really loose conceptual design and we start to get input back on the recreational warm pool and some of the other amenities within the facility and we try to fit those all in, um, we're going to be doing operational assessment of those as, you know, we don't want to put in a 200 square foot classroom if in fact there's nothing that we can put in that classroom just for the sake of trying to save money in order to, to do something else. So we're going to be balancing the operational uh, functionality of the building along with, um, you know, the size and then hopefully being able to come out with, and when we get into it a little bit more, um, uh, Jennifer will be sharing and, and Sid, uh, we have, a uh, a professional cost estimator that's going to be looking at the project at a number of places, uh, probably more robust than any other project we've done and giving us some feedback on where we're at, because that, that is an important driver of this project. Um, but going back to Giselle's initial question of what happens if we come up, how are we going to get to the point of, of doing something more? I think we need to work through the process of trying to present a, a project that has the elements um, that both of our elected boards um, have kind of tasked us with. Um, and then when we, when we get to that point, um, then we need to be, as we take it to those boards, we have to give them dis decision-making points um, about the project. Thanks, Ivan. Mm -hmm. um, Lainey, you have your hand up. Chris, I also saw your hand go up and back down. So I'm going to circle back to you in a second, maybe. You're good? Okay, Lainey, over to you. And then Sarah, I see you as well. Yeah, I'm wondering about the rec pool. I guess I'm assuming in my own head that um, for swimming lessons, like for community kids swimming lessons, that those would have to be in the rec pool, not in the competitive pool. And then I'm just wondering, looking at it, if you could actually do swimming lessons in that pool, and is that part of like the design criteria that the rec pool would allow for some amount of swimming lessons? Um, uh, Ivan, again, I'll try to answer it. And then we have Jan Wirtz here, who's our deputy director, who is uh, oversees our, our programming and has a, a pretty long history in aquatics as well. Um, you're correct. The We would assume that we would see classes in the warm water pool, um, instructional classes. However, as you progress through those um, classes and gain greater skills, there are classes that will be spread into the competitive tank. Um, the unique thing that we have here, um, and again, looking at it from an operational standpoint, is with the competitive tank, and especially during the school year, um, you know, the demand for that in times that uh, parents are available to take their kids to lessons after work um, and uh, are, are sometime occupied, They're, those hours are occupied in the competitive pool. So that's why it's important that we have um, enough depth and space to uh, provide that programming in the warm water pool. But both pools will be used for, for um, exercise classes as well as free swimming as well as um, lessons. But, but the warm water pool will be the primary um, use for that, especially for, for kids. Thanks, Lainey, and thanks, Ivan. Okay, Sarah, over to you. What were the th um, three estimated costs for the three different um, designs? We don't have cost Wait. estimates for these ones yet. 
Um, so that's kind of a next step that we'll start to look at with all of these as we weigh the options is look at not only the cost of building it, but like Ivan talked about the operational cost and cost recovery. Mm -hmm. and I just wanted to add on to the cost side. So we'll also be looking at what, what the components cost kind of like on their, you know, like specifically like aquatics, what does that cost per square foot versus what is the dry land side cost? Because that's kind of information that will help us start to balance uh, the spaces out. And, and again, making, um, you know, our goal is to get you the most we can for the $30 million. So, uh, you know, and that's part of the process we're going through is how to balance the aquatics and the dry land side with the budget. So more to come on that, Sarah. Watch this space for more. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should flip just to talk about the survey because I think you know that does focus on the rec pool and and I think that's a big piece that'll lead into our next meeting. Yeah, hey, Jen. I see it. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Sir. Sorry, this is Sid. I just before we got to that, I would love to um, if we could go back to the site plan and the a question that Makai you had about the shape, uh, and I thought was a very good question, um, and even go back one further. Jen, to the overall site. So when we started to look at the site, we look for the areas kind of like, um, where is it, where are you gonna get the most for your money out of building? And so we look for areas that are gonna be the easiest to construct. So we also have components of the golf course on one side and we have the Stafford on the other side and then we're needing parking between the Stafford and the building. So that gives us basically an extruded strip of land that we have to build the center on. So then we look at, okay, if we can find the flattest part of the site, that will be the lowest cost to build so that we can build more uh, program. So the area that we're showing there that is hatched is the area that we identified as being the kind of the premium area to build on in terms of getting the most for the, the budget. So if we continue to the next slide, the other part of it is there's a lot of grade drop off down there on the south end of the property. So the shape that you see is actually a resultant of how do we maximize the site and get you the most we can for the budget. So that's, that's really where the shape comes from, honestly, is following that area that we've got between the golf course, getting our building in there, providing the parking that we're gonna need, and then also the setbacks and all that we need from Stafford. And the other part that's coming from Stafford is there's quite a bit of grade drop across there. So we're also trying to minimize the cost of building walls and that sort of thing on Stafford. So we've added some green space uh, to help with the transition of grade from Stafford Road up to the, the center. So all of those things come into play in terms of just like how we shape it. So then we end up with this shape that has kind of a knuckle in the middle. And so in working with Councilman Hunsiger, who's our recreation uh, experts, they look at that space and go, yeah, we can shape a, a recreation or warm water pool um, to unique shapes because we see that as our area to be able to adjust the building um, a little bit size wise is right at that point. Cause the other spaces are fairly well fixed in terms of the size you need for a gym or the competition pool and that sort of thing. So that is, is why we are kind of shaped the, the way that we are. So I don't know if that helps answer your earlier question but I thought that was a very good question. Thanks Sid. Um, and Jennifer, I think right before we get to the survey, survey's up next, but uh, John Wenland had a hand up. So let's hear from John and then we'll move on to survey. Well, I just wanted to mention everyone that the charge of, of this group, uh, while we want to keep it in to a finite budget, um, we want value engineering. We want, uh, we don't want the Lake Oswego fancy. We want Lake Oswego practical. And I think that was the consensus of both the school board and the city council that we want to give as much bang for our buck as we can for facility wise. And we don't need a Taj Mahal recreational center. Uh, we built buildings in Lake Oswego that have been very, you know, 
functional and uh, deliberately designed with, uh, with what we need to use them for, uh, we don't want to look, I mean, it still has to meet all the standards of, of codes and everything else, but uh, we do want this to be uh, a building that can offer more services rather than being fancy, if that makes sense. And I think that was, uh, and I don't know, uh, John Wallen, I don't know if that's um, your assessment, but I know from the city council, we want, uh, we want to offer as much as we possibly can to our, our citizens. Uh, and it's, uh, and we have a finite amount of money to, to uh, work with. So uh, those are kind of the constraints. And I, I, think, I think this team will figure that out. So I have confidence. So, uh, and that's no pressure, Sid. So. <laughs> so John, I'm just curious, is, are you, you basically saying the marble pool is out here? Well, partial marble. I mean, just a little, cut a little bit thinner, I think is just the uh, slabs. So we just got a real thin veneer. <laughs> right, right. Just the thin one, right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I really appreciate what you're saying because that is, you know, we do a lot of community work and it's, and it's always the case is that we want to get the most for your money and, and make the best use of it. So that is and, our number one charge. And you guys, you guys did a fabulous job down in Newburgh and I'm so glad that we're joined in with your team because uh, I think you, you did some things to the pool and I, I encourage everyone to go down to the Newburgh center. Maybe we need to rent a, uh, uh, a, a thousand foot bus that we each have our six feet of space in to go down and see it. But uh, if you are down in Newburgh wine tasting, I suggest, highly suggest that you go through that facility because it's, it's not only a great facility, but uh, there's some engineering design uh, factors that uh, save money where they needed to and spend it where it was, where it was best. So um, it was a very good um, uh, project that brought out the best of everything. So Anyway, I'll throw it over to John if he has more comments. No, I would just uh, affirm affirm what you're saying. I think the thing that we that both John and I are uh, acutely aware of is this isn't like our own money. This is the taxpayers' money, and um, we we I, we work together to pool our money to get the most that we can. And we're not, you know, we're not gonna. It's going to be a beautiful facility, and there's, but it's you know, we need this. We, these are all things that we we want to do. Um, there's many different pieces. We uh, we just want to get the most we can for for our money, and I think we do want to stay within that uh, uh, the budget that we, that's allotted. Thanks. Otherwise, we have to ask for more money. <laughs> and I think this is um, you know this is a, a critical piece of what you know this group will will work together through is this idea of trade offs and what community priorities are, and that will form a lot of the basis of our discussions. Um, so I'm hoping that we can kind of work through this and illuminate a lot of this. And we do, it's great to have not only so many experts, but also people who've been involved in this decision-making in so many steps along the way. And then folks who are like, yeah, I just want to go recreate in a pool. Let's make this happen. So that's part of what we're all bringing together through this um, this committee. Sarah, I see your hand, but I'm going to pause on a question because I want to make sure that Jenny has an opportunity to share about the survey that's coming up soon. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of come back for a round of final questions and comments from people. So Jennifer, if we can go to that final slide. Um, and Jenny, do you want to tell us a little bit about this uh, recreational pool survey that's coming out shortly? Forgot to unmute. Sorry, guys. Um, so we're going to be having a series, like we'll have uh, surveys going out throughout the process. But the first thing that we thought we needed to ask the community was um, what they see the uses of the pool are. So not the features that we're going to be putting in it, but just the uses. So it'll tell us overall um, idea of what would be going into the pool and um, the shape, the size, things like that. Um, so the first survey will go out tomorrow and I'll send everybody the link for that and it will be running through January 31st. Um, and what I would ask everyone to do is help us get the survey out to as many people as possible so we can get some, some feedback and we can look at the information we get back and then bring that back to the pack for a discussion. Um, and then once again, this is just about the recreational pool and the uses of the recreational pool, but we'll be doing other surveys and asking questions about other site, other aspects of the recreational center throughout this process. 
Thanks, Jenny. So at our next PAC meeting, which again is tentatively scheduled for February 10th, um, from the, the same time, six to eight, we'll be looking at the results of this survey and um, the designs that you're seeing today are super, super, super preliminary. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm saying, I'm looking to Jennifer and Bruce here. Um, so you're gonna see, they're not gonna be sent out today, but in preparation for that February 10th meeting, you'll see something that might have changed slightly as things kind of get refined. Um, and then we'll kind of really deep dive into some of that stuff in upcoming meetings. Uh, so again, this was just kind of the taster for you to see where things are at, so to get an initial sense, to hear some of your questions and concerns that are coming up. Um, but this is by no means the end of this conversation. In fact, it's just like the very, very, very beginning. Okay, so I see a couple of hands. Um, I think Lisa had a hand. I see a hand from Alkai, and then I wanna go back to Sarah too. So Lisa, are you here? Um, I was just curious, I can't totally expand the views on all of the... Um the layouts, but is there a kitchen or some sort of kitchen-like area? We haven't talked about that specifically yet, no, and, I, and we haven't also got to that level of detail. There is still like that kitchen space in the clubhouse, in the clubhouse that I think the ultimate plan is that gets utilized for some more event space. Um, yeah, I just was thinking when you guys were talking about ROI, if you're thinking of renting it out and stuff, uh, I think that is something that we really actually need to consider. And also if we're having recreational competition in there, um, I think that that's probably a component for, for multiple things that would occur in there. And it doesn't have to be a full commercial kitchen, obviously, but some sort of space that fits that need. Thanks. Okay. Alkai, and then we'll hear from Sarah. Concerning um, the, survey did we already do a survey do we have any previous history on that i do recall that there was some information that we drew on from previous meetings do we have that available we have yeah this is ivan again um we have the the survey information um that the school district uh led in their process, this particular survey on the recreational pool um, is is real specific to trying to identify um, the types of uses that the community would envision for the recreational pool, like coming in, like you know, swim lessons, warm water, aqua walking, um, a place for toddlers to go. So it's really kind of in the same vein of doing the examination of all of the users of the competitive tank trying to survey the community to get a, a feeling of what components um, are important in the recreational pool. So, but we do, we do have that other um, survey information that, that we've done uh, previously. Um, and we do have survey information, you know, that's probably outdated now from uh, the attempt to build a recreation center at um, the West end building as well on, on recreational pool. But, Again, what we're trying to do is is really figure out what the importance is to the community and what would draw them to come use the the recreational pool. Um, and and I we, we struggle with that as a department. We struggle with that, and with the data that that has been collected in the last couple of years on surveys, we we struggle because there's not a whole bunch that really addresses that directly. Um, Sarah, we. I'm gonna maybe see if you do have a question. So you scoot it over you, go right ahead. Yep, I have a quick question. Um, just circling back to what Councillor Winland said, is there a plan for the PAC, to, PAC members to have like a formal tour of nearby recently built rec and aquatic centers? I'll, I'll maybe let the other project team members, I know in my experience facilitating a number of different committee, committees, that's really, really challenging with current public health directives. Um, I, I know one committee I facilitate, there was some options of just, hey, this is when it's open, we'll like let you know when you can go. Um, but kind of formal tours have been put on hold with other groups that I work with. I don't know if, um, you know, Jennifer, if you've had experience with the similar experiences or, or Jenny or Bruce or Ivan, if you want to weigh in on those possibilities, it's, it's tough right now. 
to kind of do anything that we would normally do in these kinds of processes. It is tough. And I would say it is a very valuable thing to do. And we have done that before on lots of projects before the pandemic. Um, it's challenging right now. It is. Um, we have, we early on, we talked about a list of projects and maybe Allison, that's kind of a good idea to talk about further with our group, you know, throwing out a list of projects we recommend people going to see on their own time. Um, I know that the Shehalem Aquatic Center is, is still closed because it's in the extreme risk, risk zone. It was open, but it's now closed again. So um, it's just really challenging, but I think if that opportunity opens up, we should try to take it somehow. So um, Sarah will, yeah, Jennifer and, I, and us and the team will think about some other alternatives or if there are virtual tours or photos you can look at online so we can keep you all safe, but also get you some good information. Thanks for that. I was, I was gonna suggest a virtual tour, um, if nothing else, where we could show images, images and you know talk through the different kinds of uh, facilities and, and features that they have. Cool. I can't wait for Sid to be the tour guide. I'm really excited for that. It's one of my limited talents. Uh, I do love to take tours and uh, so yeah, we could do that. Thanks Sid. Okay, Sandy, and then I see a second question from Lainey. Um. Okay, I unmuted myself. I found my new computer where I can actually hit there. Um, so Ivan or Bruce, anybody in the parks department, it might be useful for you to kind of overview kind of what's going on adjacent to where we're building, how we are planning on using the clubhouse at the golf course, kind of getting to where the kitchen and where some of those other amenities that will be there that are already a part of the existing um, facilities and how that might, you know, lend to the overall experience that we're going to have once the, the building is complete. And Just Sandy, I think that, or Ivan, you were going to answer, but I think that that's something that we'll, we'll put into the, in fold into future meetings, mm -hmm. unless Ivan, you were going to. Uh, I'll answer it really. Like high quick. level. You don't have to go. High, into high level. Just high high level. level. Yeah. yeah. We have, we have the existing clubhouse. Um, part of what we would like to do um, and um, which is lending is leading its way into the design of, of the new facility too, is we like the idea of having one um, front counter point of, uh, of contact for people that are going to be both using the recreation center and the golf course. So, um, so what that does is that, you know, that actually makes us more efficient operating um, because then we're just staffing the one, but then the, what we've envisioned, um, the clubhouse becoming is a clubhouse has a little bit under 3000 square foot space um, in the main room. That's a dividable space. Um, it has its own restrooms. It has a commercial kitchen. Um, and we envision that space um, reinventing that space into not only a flexible programming space that could be divided um, into two spaces or, or more, um, but then also having that space available um, for dry type um, rentals and, and events, small, small events. Um, the fact that it does have that kitchen um, and that it does have a, a large room um, with an improved patio, we could improve the patio. Um, and then we'll operate it um, as flexible multi-use space uh, for recreation programming as well. Ivan, is that your puppy? A puppy. <laughs> trying to dig out of his crate that, that's <laughs> open behind me. <laughs> Great. Um, we've got a couple of questions in the chat that I think have been kind of really getting into some of the detail of things. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to, thanks Jennifer, pass it over to Lainey and then we'll, we'll take a look at some of these questions in the chat. And if we don't get to your question that you put in there today, we're tracking all of these and these will go kind of in our parking lot, our bicycle rack, because I think we're really going to get into some of this detail in the next meeting. So Lainey, over to you. Um, I was, I have a question, but I was just going to point out that I was looking online at the Newburgh facility and they do have one of the fancy like 360 degree tours. So it's not as good as when Sid leads us on it, but it's a nice online tour um, to see that. But I was asking, I was just going back to the survey about um, the use of the rec pool and using that to try to determine how people will use it in the future. And I'm just curious, I guess, and I'm assuming 
that um, folks are in touch with like the Portland Parks and Rec and how those facilities um, are used and how the, you know, the operations blow out and all that stuff. Like, are you also gathering data from places like that to inform expectations about how it'll be used? Um, we are, and actually, uh, we're we've uh, retained Ballard King and Associates, um, Ken Ballard, who his firm specializes in that type of research. Um, so he's conducting that right now. So we'll have some information not only on our market, but then on uh, specific um, areas of programming and what their effect can be on the operations. So yeah, we we are doing that. Thanks for asking the question. Thanks. Um, and Lisa did ask a question in the chat asking, um, and I, this is a, a true test for somebody on the project team, um, how many, the number of people per square foot that can use the rec pool. Does anybody kind of know that um, might help give a, a sense of use of that pool? I don't know off the top of my head, but I wrote it down specifically so that next time we can bring that back. <laughs> so more to come. Yeah, more to come. We'll consult with our aquatics designer too, because they're the total pros about how many people can fit in that water. Yep. Cool. Yeah, and in Oregon, it's it's regulated by the Oregon Health Department, um, so they actually have an occupancy load um, that's calculated both on surface water depth and the number of uh, restroom fixtures you have available. Yeah, it's hard for me to understand just square footage what that means, and if we're serving our community, then that would help me put my head around it. Maybe everyone else too. I think that's helpful yeah. context. Yeah. Not, not COVID COVID square foot use. <laughs> not COVID. Good point. Okay, folks, I think it's going to be about that time where we start to wrap things up and talk about some of the next steps. But John, I see a hand from you. Go right ahead. I just ask one question on data points. If um, Because we have many uses, is there a way to give kind of approximate cost of what it is a square foot for for pools and a square foot for gyms and a square foot for fitness centers type of thing, just so that you we have some sort of a concept. We're not holding you to it in the sense of, um, you know, it's perfect, but just in general concept. Um, so if you make the pool, the, the, uh, the warm water pool bigger, is that, you know, like, five times the cost of building a gymnasium or two times the cost or whatever, maybe just some ratios so that we can figure out as we go through priorities or balances, um, the give and take of what you're, you're going back and forth with. Just a thought. Yeah, John, you recall in the, uh, in the previous study, we, we did just that with the various components of the building and kind of created a, a kind of a scalable idea of, of what uh, the cost would be trying to get to our, assumed value, we'll do very much the same thing here. And as we get more detailed in design, um, those estimated amounts will, will become much more detailed as well in, in their accuracy. Great, thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony, thanks, John. And what I'm hearing in that, just also to circle back to Lisa's point is, let's make sure that we're framing this in lots of different ways to understand. I'm a former educator, so I do like to think about, okay, how am I gonna understand the square footage if I'm not a numbers person? So I think when we come back to you, um, we'll, be, we'll be thinking about that and making sure that we're answering your questions, but also giving you lots of different ways to visualize something that could look very abstract at this point. Um, so folks, I'm hearing that we have some, some things to bring to you next time. Again, this is just your taster. You're going to have some survey information that we'll be looking at in our next meeting, and we'll be diving deeper and uh, giving you more detail on these very preliminary concept designs and fleshing this out with some of the other expertise that both Ivan and Tony referenced in the meeting today. So exciting stuff to come. Um, we also, if you do have any questions that you're sitting with or, you know, occur to you that would be something really helpful to see or a way to understand the material, um, please feel free to reach out. You should have Jenny's email address. She's going to be a point person for the, for the PAC for this group. Um, but my email is also in the um, charter document. If you want to reach out to either of us, we'll be sure to get you what you need uh, for these meetings going forward. My whole hope is that these can be productive, these can be meaningful, and these can really help make this much needed service come to life for this community. So I just so appreciate your commitment. I like work with volunteer 
community members all the time and it never ceases to like fill me with so much love for the place that we live and the awesome people who are willing to do stuff like this on um you know when you could be like Netflixing or I don't know relaxing in front of a fire or doing something really fun playing with your new puppy so it's always so so appreciated and uh, I look forward to many more meetings with you um over the next six or eight months as we work together so a final whip round does anybody have any burning questions comments anything that you need to to vocalize in this space before we start to wrap it up and send you on your way i can already tell that we're going to have some really rich conversation and a couple of you were quiet tonight that's okay but i will be asking you for your thoughts and maybe gently uh bringing you up to the microphone so to speak so we uh, look forward to hearing from everyone in upcoming meetings, but it's a lot to wrap your heads around. And again, this is just kind of give you a taste of where we're at, the work ahead and your charge and purpose. So hopefully we met those marks. Um, and if you do have anything else, feel free to reach out. Okay. Can I comment real quick? I don't know what happened to my hand. Oh, um, is it possible yes, to no get problem. some kind of footprint from the Shehalem just um, to Lisa's point on trying to get a, a perspective of what we're dealing with versus what that existing um, facility is, which is similar in the lines of the layout in terms of the the rec or the competition pool, the rec pool, and then a gym. And I think seeing that kind of you know next to the other one will give us an idea of how big of a space we're talking about because we could go down uh, on our own and and check out the, that facility just from the outside. I'm seeing nodding heads from people who can probably provide that information. So, yeah, I think I think that's something we can share, right, Sid? That's not there's no issue with that. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a great yeah. idea. It gives you some sense of scale on it. Yeah, uh, and I think very useful. And I'm also curious for if you can just kind of give me a thumbs up. Have most folks on the PAC been to the Shehalem Rec Center or seen it, or you're kind of familiar with it? Okay, some but not all. So maybe there's a little bit of additional or other facilities that you can do a virtual tour of, like Sid mentioned. So we'll we'll keep that in mind as well um, for those folks who haven't had the joy of going. John, you said wine tasting in Newburgh. Like how delightful does that sound right now? Sounds great. Um, okay, cost per square foot square foot for the facility would also be nice. Thanks for that, Cole. Um, yeah, kind of balancing this this cost need what the community can support. I'm hearing some clear values here as well. Lisa, thank you. Seeing if um, she's interested in seeing if the dry space area could be designed to be more flexible. Cool. Um, all right, folks, it is 7.55. And my hope this evening was that we would not take a full two hours. So I think with that, we've got, we're gonna be saving your chat. And again, we're recording this meeting and Ariella has been taking notes throughout so um, we'll be coming back to you with more shortly. I'm curious, Bruce, Tony, Jennifer, Sid, do you, do you have any closing remarks or anything for the group before we uh, take it home tonight? Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you. Thanks for Why Ivan showing his puppy. <laughs> yeah, perfect um, ending. Are you sending the presentation around to us as well um, or? Um, I don't think we're going to be sending this one just because of the very, very preliminary nature of these drawings. But if there is any information as far as the um, MOU piece that you'd like to get, I'm sure that the team can help um, furnish that. But you'll watch this space for, I know you're going to want to pour over those drawings and take a look, but I think at the next meeting, they should be in a, in a place that's more, the, maybe the team feels more comfortable with their less preliminary nature. Jennifer, is that correct? Okay. Yes, yes, I would agree with that. I'm right. laughing at the dog too. <laughs> oh my gosh, we have dogs it's everywhere. Like it's the best meeting ever. Okay. I just wanted to comment. I thought a lot of really good questions. So we appreciate the good thought. That's really helpful for us. Definitely. All right. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for your time. We so appreciate it. We will see you in February and we'll be confirming tentatively, pencil it in for February 10th, 
from six to eight. If we can have a shorter meeting, we'll try and schedule accordingly for a shorter meeting, but we're holding two hours just to be sure that we do have enough time to really get to your questions, your comments, hear from everyone in the group, see your cute puppies, um, say hello to your kids if they're in the way. Um, but we'll be confirming that via email shortly. So look for something from Jenny, share that survey when it comes out, that'll also be shared with everyone. And we really look forward to seeing you soon. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye. Take care, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. See you later, folks.